Well, Leroy Jenkins is apparently being added into the core set. I have been lucky enough to be given the core set early from Blizzard, and I haven't gone through it at all, so I'm really excited to see what they actually added for Hearthstone's 10th year, which makes me feel very old. Most importantly, I have really high expectations here because for the 10th year in Hearthstone, you would hope they would do something rather spectacular. So if Leroy's back, this is probably going to be an absolute banger. But before we even go into this core set, we have to remember rotation also happens. Voyage into the Sunken City, Castle Nathria, and Mar March of the Lich King will be rotated out and March of the Lich King is a really big deal because that's when Death Knight was added into the game, which means they probably need a lot of cards in their core set. And I'm very intrigued to see what they do and how they handle that. Well, let's do this with each new Hearthstone year comes an update to the free core set that all players have access to this year. Hearthstone's 10th year brings an exciting core set refresh designed to celebrate Hearthstone's history and future with iconic old favorites and a few new friends. Just a card, true heart, please. I am begging you. I miss that card a lot. The new core set goes live when the year of the pegasus begins all right let's see what iconic cards are returning i this is a big deal for me man we're charging into the new year head first this course that we're making bold calls and bringing back some of the old fairies you haven't seen in standard for a while including okay so leroy jenkins is being added back into standard this card was rotated out specifically because of the interaction it had with a lot of other cards like shadow step which i'm not sure if it's still in the core set uh, i'm a little worried because i think leroy jenkins definitely caused a pattern that people were not a huge fan of but i'm I'm gonna be optimistic here and see how they handle this now is Leroy Jenkins broken in wild I don't think so but the power level in standard is lower than wild so he might actually be good maybe they're doing something with like raising the hell total with Renathal maybe Renathal is still in the core set we'll have to wait and see Barbie war acts at two mana is extremely exciting though for people who've been playing Hearthstone for a very long time this was an absolute core card in the control warrior archetype it also was used in aggro and tempo warrior decks because a three attack weapon for warrior at two mana was was really good I am someone who's excited for this card to be back I'm not sure about Leroy Jenkins dude I see just the card true fire which is exciting but hold on a second it looks like they're adding the wrath of the air totem back in it looks just as I remembered it as the day I lost it still spell damage plus one I imagine that means they're probably gonna get rid of the plus one attack totem because that one by far I feel like is the worst unless they're getting the one one totem out of the way but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the plus one attack just a card true heart for those of you who have never played with this card this was a six mana six three they're buffing it to a five mana six four and it's a battle cry of replace your starting hero power with a better one so if you ever played a baku before it's the same concept it makes all the hero powers just better some of them are way better than others this is the first time that i probably will ever see just like our true heart with demon hunter and death knight and i'll probably put all of the updated hero powers here I am a huge fan of this card. I'm a huge fan of this card, and I don't think it's polarizing enough that at five mana, it's going to be annoying to play against. You don't really want to hero power that often in today's current Hearthstone. So I have no idea what to really expect of the power level of a five mana Jessica True Heart, but I am optimistic here, and hopefully it will favor fun decks, right? Because that's what Hearthstone always does, dude. Uh, friendly new faces. We're also celebrating that many new friends we made along the way with four new Warcraft Rumble inspired cards added directly into this year's core set. That's kind of exciting. Okay, so we have Nomelia Safe Pilot, six mana four two with Rush. Also damages minions next to whomever this attacks, and with a death rattle of deal two damage to all enemies. That actually seems like a pretty decent card uh mid-range will like that i'm not sure if aggro wants that control probably likes that. i think that's a pretty decent card kind of cool that they're doing like a warcraft rumble collab in a sense i think if you need a board clear in your deck that card's actually going to be very playable all right then we have warsong grunt i've been a three sex rush after this attacks and kills a minion it may attack again that's a pretty slow card it has a good effect uh we've seen this effect before on like bigger monsters i don't know if they've ever printed this kind of text on this low of a man of a card before if you could buff this card up i'm sure it's going to be really great so these are both kind of like board clears in their own rights this card i feel like is much better though we'll see this might actually be playable the good thing about the core set we have to remember it's foundational cards to help you build decks so if you need a card like this or you need a card like this both of them are playable maybe not this one this one in arena might go insane though all right then we have night elf huntress i've been a three three battle cry deal three damage to three different enemies you pick the targets support to know that this does go face i mean again not a bad card five mana three three to deal nine damage to targets you pick that's kind of sick i can get behind that and then we have footman <laughs> <laughs> what a name for a card four minute two five taunt adjacent minions are immune while attacking that seems like a pretty okay card if you're ahead this is a very scary card to play against right in in mid-range matchups this is this is actually insane also got it yeah if you're going like first or you can coin into this that that this might be i mean his name is kind of insane but i actually low-key think this card's pretty nutty if there's a deck that can call for a card like footman i am actually kind of worried of how good this is gonna be it's very snowballing elusive is becoming a keyword after years of hunting we finally 
pin down our most evasive keyword yet elusive minions with elusive cannot be targeted by spells or hero powers again we've had that kind of effect literally since classic and people have been asking for the elusive keyword uh they're updating a lot of minions with the elusive keyword including that card that you voted into the core in december evasive worm we also plan to use this effect a little bit more frequently in the upcoming year okay so that's important to note i'm for it if they feel like they can design some good cards with this sure which it makes me laugh that they still don't have cleave i feel like cleave is such a good way of just not writing this insane amount of text but whatever i'm for it all right so this is what it looks like now rush divine shield elusive looks so much cleaner i'm such a huge fan of it all right because the core set is the free baseline set that underprints the entire year of hearts and expansions core rotation is always a good time for us to evaluate what we want the foundation of for the year to look like we do this not just in deciding what to keep remove or add to the core but also adjustments to the cards we include this year we felt like it was time to uproot druids ramping mechanic reduce root requirements for several death knight cards and upgrade some of our favorite cards for the modern game well i have no idea what to expect so let's do this so this is every card that is getting an adjustment in the year of the pegasus core sets there is a lot of stuff to go through and i will try my best to remember every change that they made if i miss one i'm super sorry but tell me how stupid i am with a comment down below so first we have play grain play grain is going from three unholy to two unholy that's a okay deal at least it allows you to have the ability to play with frost or blood if you really need to army of the dead i believe is going from two unholy to one it's a way bigger deal because it allows you to play with rainbow death knight which should be a pretty good archetype for death knight in the upcoming year deathbreaker sour fang is going from a three five to a three six it's also no longer three blood runes which means you know you can pair it whatever you want it seems like the biggest thing i'm noticing is that there's no more three cost runes we'll see if that trend keeps up uh the harbinger is going from a two two to a three two but it's nice that it's coming back it's a pretty safe card to add frost strike is one rune i think now instead of two uh after checking my sources it is uh it is one rune now this card is no longer has a rune requirement which is kind of nice no muncher no longer has a rune uh requirement it used to be one blood metamorphosis is going to swap your hero power to deal five damage okay so this is what metamorphosis was back in like demon hunters prime i'm a little nervous as much as you a lot of you probably know this i am not the biggest demon hunter fan maybe they have something exciting to show us with demon hunter this year i don't know very nervous about this card battle fiend is going back to a one three i hate this year already um this card was very snowball -y it's very important that you killed this really early on i guess that's a different time because it came out in 2020 we're in 2024 now but i am nervous i don't like when demon hunter is the best class of the game i think the hearthstone suffers what it is flame tongue totem i believe is now a zero three instead of a zero two but let me double check my sources okay, yeah so currently flame tongue is a zero two now it is a zero three twisting nether is going from destroying all minions to destroy all minions and locations that's kind of a nice buff for twisting nether probably still not playable maybe i don't know maybe locations really pop off that's also exciting to know that they're going to keep on making locations big game hunter i believe is just getting tradable which is kind of exciting <laughs> what the hell uh i actually think low-key this might be really good in like slower highlander decks like you might actually play this just for a pretty good removal and it's gonna feel so good to say i got the beast in my sights i kind of miss that uh sleepy dragon is going from a four attack to a six twelve which is kind of weird because most dragons have like a four twelve stat line but i understand the buff it's kind of a bad card and then fairy dragon just has the elusive text now which looks really weird after all these years so that's all the cards returning to core new to core what do we have right now this card is two unholy runes it'll be one unholy rune which is i guess nice soul sealer is no three blood runes and it's going to two blood runes this definitely is a huge change because it might open up like a frost blood deck because of this this card was really is really good so uh it's like almost a better twisting nether in a sense but then they buff twisting nether right a uh, blood tap i believe is going from two blood to one which sounded weird to say out loud this card's also going to one blood marrow manipulator is going from three to two frostmorn is oh my what the hell frostmorn i believe right now is a seven mana five three and they're making a six mana four three weapon i mean that's not bad i think it's a better card i think i would take the one less mana for one less attack i think that's a pretty good trade-off uh this card i believe is the exact same except for there's no unholy rune now acolyte of death is uh i believe this is a three four right now after a friendly undead dies draw a card yeah so this is a three four. Oh, interesting you know what oddly enough i have to go look this card has one frost rune on it right now and they're getting rid of it and they're making it a two four this is probably a really good change for unholy death knights because it's just an extra draw engine this will be a probably a pretty fundamental card to the death knight archetype uh asphyxiate is losing its one blood rune Oaken summons is coming back 
four mana to gain six armor summon a minion from your deck that costs four or less i believe this is what it is right now except for hold on let me double check okay oh they're so cute and quirky bro they added elusive but recruit no 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 it's, I, that's why the card looks so strange to me there's no longer recruit on the card i don't know why they did that but whatever palagos is eight mana now uh it looks like it's the exact same thing your first spell each turn costs zero battle card discover spell yeah so it's the same stat line it's just now eight mana probably an okay change i actually really hope there's like a slower control mage deck i kind of miss those decks we'll have to wait and see air elemental i believe is a one mana two one without the elusive keyword and now it's a one minute th one minute three one with elusive and it's an elemental i feel like that's kind of nuts isn't it okay and i worry dark alley packed summon a fiend with taunt and stats equal to your hand size i believe right now it doesn't have taunt dark alley packed does not have taunt right now so that's the change here it's the exact same mana cost as well i actually really like this card from united storm when it's one of the few cards i really like so well, they brought that back. Uh, Ysera is now getting two dream cards at the end of your turn instead of one. I do think it's still pretty bad, but Laughing Sister did get a buff, I believe. I think it's three mana right now. Hold on. I have to double check. No one plays Ysera anymore. No, it is two mana. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So that's still two mana, but now they just added the elusive keyword. This card does four to everything except for Ysera right now. Uh, this card is three mana currently. It is now going to two. Uh, so Ysera got, uh, I guess, a small buff. I'm not really sure how much dream cards really matter, but Ysera is a pretty iconic card. So it's kind of nice that she got a little bit of a buff. Oh, wait, there's more down here. So I believe dream right now is one mana. Let me double check. Yeah, dream is one mana right now. It's going to zero. I believe it used to cost zero as well. It's been it's been a hot minute again. Ysera hasn't really seen play. Uh, Nightmare right now is plus four, plus four. And now it's going to plus five, plus five, which again, I believe is what it used to be. CMA is going from a seven mana six, six to a seven mana seven, seven. I think it's the same text. Yeah, it's the exact same text. So slightly better. It's an elemental. It's not a bad card. We saw Jessica Trueheart already, which is kind of exciting. Oh, no. I see this motherfucker in the bottom left corner of my screen. And that's literally the last thing I want to see ever in my life. Mind control tech is coming back. Battle cry if your opponent has four more minions, take control of one. So I believe that's the exact same text it has. It used to be three mana. Now it's five. I feel like that's a good change. I hate this card. I, I despise it. It's one of my least favorite cards of all time. I five mana, it might be unplayable, but we might see it. And God, I really hope we don't. But all right, Hearthstone, if you really want this card back, whatever. And then we saw the Evasive Worm. So that is every card for the Year of the Pegasus that is getting either a return to the core set or that's new to a core. So every other card after this is going to be cards that are being added or replaced that are not getting any sort of adjustments. Let's see what they are. All right, so this is every card that will be leaving or joining the core set. We're going to start with Death Knight and then go through all the classes. But before we get to that, make sure you subscribe and like the video. It helps out a ton. All right, let's see what we're leaving with. Marigar is gone which is i feel like marigar was a pretty big deal for death knight for at least unholy but if they don't want any three cost runes cards in the core sets or i guess in the game for standard uh, marigar probably is too spooky to have at two unholy which i'm kind of glad they're getting rid of uh deathbringer's leaving i think that's fine this card was fine uh, it saw a little bit of play on Unholy, but I'm not sure how relevant it is. Bone Digger is gone. Graveyard Shift. I feel like this card was pretty safe. Yeah, I'm surprised Graveyard Shift is leaving. Let's see. Possessifier, I hardly know where he's leaving. Unfortunate. Corrupted Ashbringer is leaving as well. Patchwork is gone. I feel like that is pretty safe. I feel like a lot of people did not like this card. And with the idea of lowering rune requirements, it's probably too scary to have this card in the core set because it's probably going to be in like every Death Knight deck, which I think is a really smart decision. Obliterate is leaving, which is I think is very intriguing. Hard Strike is leaving. Rhyme Fang Sword is leaving. Oversee Frigidera is leaving as well. I mean, after she got nerfed, she was kind of whatever. I don't think I've ever seen this card actually get played unless it was created by. All right, Rhyme Sculptor is also leaving. Defrost is leaving, which I think is very interesting. But maybe they felt like because the rune requirement is lower, it's too much draw for Death Knight. I'm not really sure. Same as rune forging. These are some of these decisions are very interesting, but I would have to imagine that they tested the rune requirements and they felt like it was too good. All right, so then we got uh, new to the core set for Death Knight. So these should be cards that are currently not in it. They're from March to Lich King that they feel like should be brought to the core set because it's a key identifier to death knight's classic and this is the first time they have to do this for death knight so the scourge is staying which is probably appropriate this card's staying at one and holy again vampiric blood okay so interesting vampiric blood is still three blood runes and i think that's probably for the best but it's interesting they put soul stone down too I'm, I'm very intrigued on this corpse explosion staying blood tap and we saw already we saw this card soul breaker staying this is nice frost's fury is also three frost runes probably for the best once again i would hate to have this card seen more often i guess it's important to note that with three runes you can't discover them i don't know if you can generate them i, I don't I actually don't know the rule someone tell me in the comments down below but i know you can't discover them so they probably kept these two like this because of that reason uh horn of winter staying 
staying. We saw this already. Might and Menethol's also staying. Frostborn's getting a slight little buff. We have Corpse Bride. Okay. Nerubian, we saw Asphyxiate. We saw an Acolyte of Death. Okay. So overall, Death Knight looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how they handled the core set. I think it's going to be a pretty good class. Before I look at Demon Hunter, there shouldn't be nearly as many cards as Death Knight. The rest of the classes should not be nearly as close because there's a lot less cards they have to consider. Demon Hunter, I despise what it's at the top, like I've said before in this video. So I am really worried for the metamorphosis change, what this will be. But let's see. These are the cards leaving the core set. Flame Reaper is gone. Wrathscale Naga is gone. And Feast of Souls is gone. Most of these, I think all three of these cards didn't really see a ton of play. So it kind of makes a ton of sense. What is being added to the core set is Expendable Performers. I actually like this card a lot, but uh, this Rascal Naga and Expendable Performers were like really good together. So it's surprising that they're they're getting rid of it, but maybe they're worried for a combo. Wayward Sage, I think is a pretty safe card to add. I liked it a lot. Umberwang, again, one of the OGs from Demon Hunter's reign. And with the Battle Fiend buff, we could be back to 2020 Demon Hunter. We'll have to wait and see. All right, Druid. Now we did see from Druid that they're getting rid of mana or ramping, I should say. Nourish and Wild Growth are both leaving. For the record, we have had Wild Growth and Nourish in the game for literally 10 years. And for the 10th anniversary, they say, fuck you to Druid, which means that we are probably gonna get some pretty spicy ramp cards if I had to guess. But if they're getting rid of this, that, that means that they're making room for other ramp cards to be added to the game, or maybe they're just tired of balancing the game around nourish and wild growth. We'll have to wait and see. Curie's leaving, Soul of the Forest is leaving. This is kind of a, a little bit of a blow to token druid if it remains a deck. Pounce is leaving, I think that's, you know, who plays Pounce? Solar Eclipse is leaving, and so is Lunar Eclipse. I think these are both great. I think all of these are actually pretty safe changes for Druid. Druid has felt the same, like kind of played the exact same way for a really long time. It's either been like you ramp to an absolute broken combo or you play token Druid. So I'm kind of excited to see what they added in return. So we have Greybow. Greybow was a pretty insane death rattle minion for Druid. Uh, if you were behind and then your opponent had a board, this is very frustrating to play against, but it is a good card. Park Panther, I'm actually a huge fan of. I thought this card was really well designed. The Spellstone has returned. I like Spellstones. They were a really good mechanic from Kobolds and Catacombs. I'm happy for this. Thick Hide Kodo's sick. Just a safe card. Swipe, and it's three mana. Oh, shit. <laughs> I can get behind it. Uh, that means Druid does have a pretty... Three mana swipe, excuse me? Oh, my God. Okay. And then we have Raven Idol, which I actually love this card. I think it's really well designed. This is from, I believe, League of Explorers. And then we saw Oaken Summons without Recruit, which just makes me feel strange. Man, Druid is really spicy. I wonder what it's actually going to mean for the game, but I'm, I'm for it, dude. I'm, I'm definitely for it. Okay, Hunter, what do we have? We're losing King Crush. Oh, my God. RIP. Selective Breeder is leaving. Catrick is leaving. Doggy Biscuit is leaving. Wandering Monster, Candle Shot, and Mark Shot. So for the most part, I believe like these three didn't see a ton of play. King Crush was only really played if you can like cheat him out. Selective Breeder, I think, is a really good card. I'm surprised they're getting rid of it. And I, I feel like both of these are probably okay with leaving as well. At least it's like a, it adds a little bit more identity to Hunter, theoretically. Let's see what cards they added though. Okay, Barak Kodo Bane. I actually think it's a really well designed card for Hunter. I'm, I'm going to eat those words, I feel like. All right, Master's Call. Uh, So I guess instead of having Selective Breeder, they would rather have you just have Master's Call. Uh, and this card was pretty sick. Rat Traps being added in. I guess they're also getting rid of like secrets to switch the secret game up. I feel like that's also going to be the case, right? So Rat Traps in, Ice Trap is in. Both of these were played secrets, so that's kind of nice. Spellstone has returned. Oh, Secret Hunter might be back. Really? We're going to do Ball of Spiders, guys, and Kill Command. Oh, my God. Dude, they're not. There's no way they added Swipe, and there's no way they added Kill Command. What the hell? Hmm. I don't know. Anyways, Kill Command's here. Uh, I think Hunter's is actually pretty decent. I feel like Hunter will be in a pretty good spot. Hunter usually is in a pretty good spot, so I'm not too worried about their core set. They have a really good hero power and just usually they get pretty decent cards. So I like the spell stun though. I did like Secret Hunter a lot, so it's kind of nice. All right, Mage. What are we getting for Mage here? So we're losing Agwin, Pyroblast, Fire Sail, and Snap Freeze. And the Mana Storm card they released for Festival of Legends is just so bad of pyroblast is leaving i feel like whatever uh Eggwin, yeah she was a fun card sure i can get rid of it fire sale again a really good card that they're getting rid of and then snap freeze was never really played so instead we're adding caligos we're bringing back flame strike we're adding primordial glyph and we're adding frostbolt back into the this is a really like dude if you compare this to this 
This is nuts. I think at least, at least, especially these two cards. Primordial Glyph is one of Mage's best cards they've ever received. And Frostbolt has just always been pretty good. Halagos at 8-man is good. And Flame Strike is just there if you need it. Okay, I think Mage is going to be uh, pretty good. <laughs> Mage looks good. Okay, Paladin. We're losing, um, what's his name? Lathroxian, the Redeemed, the Silverhand Recruit guy. I guess like you never really saw like dude package. And also there's a lot of dude stuff in, I believe, Castle Nathria that's leaving. So I guess it kind of makes sense. Amber Watcher's leaving. Interesting. True Silver Champion. That feels very strange. It's the same as Blessing of Kings. They're kind of like really iconic paladin cards. And instead, we're receiving Lady Leodrin, Hammer of Naru, Spike Ridge Steed, and Silver Moon Portal. I mean, these three cards were absolute bangers. So I, if I had to, okay, I'm just going to infer this right now. Libram Paladin or something like that will return. I'm just going to take a guess. Hammer of Naru is a really good card. One of Paladin's best cards. I can't remember what expansion it's from, but I remember it being really good. In Angoro times, this card was nuts. I feel like maybe at six man, it might be a little bit too weak, but we'll see. And then Silver Moon Portal uh was an okay card i'm sure it'll be all right but i don't think this card's gonna really see play i'm i'm really confident this will see play at some point okay priest so we're losing dark bishop benedictus which is kind of unfortunate i feel like it's always fun to have this card in the core set but maybe they don't really want to print a ton of shadow spells this year we're losing draconite operative holy champion shadowed spirit shadow or death again feels really weird to lose a card like this and then shard of naru i mean if you're playing priest this card goes into your deck and they probably don't want the core set to be like that so i understand this change i'm gonna miss this card though but we'll see what they're adding in madame lazul obsidian statue okay ships Churrigan. this is like the surging guy right after you summon a minion, give it plus one health. This card's from Caverns of Time. That's the first time we've seen a Caverns of Time card being added into uh, the core set. Spellstone's being added in, so every class is the other one for sure. Void Shard's being added in, and Shadow or Pain's being added back. Was Shadow or Pain not on the core set this year? Mm, I guess that makes sense. I guess overall Priest is fine. I'm not a Priest player. I'm kind of, this card brings up bad memories, but I, I'm sure it'll be okay. I like Lazula as a card. She probably won't see a ton of play though. I feel like this card's going to be decent. If they make like an aggro paladin or a Priest accessory, this will be actually pretty decent. Okay, Rogue. Rogue is losing, I guess, I think that's all three of the secrets in the current, um, maybe I'm wrong. I feel like there's, I feel like this, these are the only three secrets though. Hanar is gone, Ambush is gone, Cheat Death's gone, Plagiarize is gone, his Buccaneer is gone. I don't know if any of these really saw a ton of play, but okay, we'll see what we're replacing with. What are we doing guys? Oh, I thought we learned our lesson from this card. <laughs> Flick Sky Shiv, really fun card to play with and against. I'm a huge fan of it. I think it's a really well-designed card. I'm kind of glad it's back. Uh, Strider is a fun card too. I don't think they buffed it at all. They did not. Special Cutlass, I'm a huge fan of. It is a really good card to play with Thief Rogue, and they printed a ton of Thief Rogue stuff. So I know what class I'm playing next year for sure. The Spectral Cuts is really fun. Rating Party is good. Draw two parts from your deck and a weapon. This fits really nicely with the Spectral Cutlass, but I'm sure there will be other weapons being added to Rogue's Arsenal this year. And then we have Sap. Those of you who didn't play with Sap, Sap was a really good card. I'm excited to see how good Sap is in Standard in 2024. I hope it's not good though. Sorry, with Shaman, we're losing Grand Totem Eyesore, the Doom Hammer, the Bloodlust, the Sap, and the Strength Totem. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, I talked about it earlier. Like, I feel like they wouldn't get rid of any of the other ones. I feel like maybe they thought that the Spell Power Totem was so fun for Shaman and Iconic. I I'm gonna be real though, just as a quick little conversation here. I'm not the biggest fan of it returning because I, I feel like the reason they got rid of it was because of how annoying it can be. Calamos is coming back. Calamos is a pretty good card. The invocations, for those of you who don't know, is like deal three to the entire board, summon a bunch of 1-1 one, one elementals, deal six damage to the opponent, and heal for 12, I believe. With Castle Nathan leaving, I think Muck Pulse is a pretty good card to add to the, the Shaman core set. I think it's a pretty good card. We saw this card already. Oh my god. <laughs> um the reason why i'm i'm questioning this decision because during what i believe was one of the worst expansions in the game one night in cares and if you played during this you know this card was an absolute menace with spell power totem i was gonna be like oh there's no more spell power totem but there's spell power totem and then we're getting wrath of the air totem back <sighs> i mean we, what can i say they cooked i guess right shaman looks a lot better like if you looking at this screen you're like oh no shaman's gonna be so bad and then it's like oh shit they're so good now especially calamos with all the elementals they just printed for showdown the badlands uh warlock is losing Melganis, Abyssal Enforcer, Lakari Falhound, Void Collar, Imp King Boss, and Phoenix Circle. The ones that actually saw play for the most part was maybe Void Collar and Phoenix Circle. The rest of them were kind of just poo. I understand why they put Void Collar in, but it never really saw play. We're getting Archville and Reform. Doom Guard, my beloved. Oh, how I missed you so much. Zero mana soul fire, please. It's the 10th year anniversary, please. Dark Alley Pack. The spell. Wait, did Rogue not get their spellstone back or Shaman? Oh, yeah, they didn't. Okay, not every class is getting a spellstone. Bloodbound Imp, Demonic Studies. 
All right, as a Warlock player, how do I feel about this? I really like Rafam. I think he's a really fun card. One of my one of my favorite Warlock cards of all time because he, he just allows aggro decks to be just absolute crazy. Spellstone's really good. I like it. That also means Drain Souls in the core set, which is good. Doomguard, I love Doomguard. I think it's one of the most fun cards. If there's a way to cheat it out, it's always a good time. <laughs> and I, I was complaining about Leroy. I hate myself. <laughs> okay. Warrior, what are we losing? Armagadillo, Dynomatic, Sword Eater, Cruel Taskmaster and the Woodcutter's Axe. Okay, so the only ones that really saw play was, I believe, like none really. I think Sword Eater might have saw play too, definitely in Twist. But yeah, most of these were whatever. And they're getting Deathwing Man Aspect, really good card. Town Crier, really good card. Cargo Guard, pretty good card. Sanguine Depths is returning, which is not a bad card from um castle nathria and then we're getting the fiery win axe which is i am a huge fan of this card returning i love this card so overall for classes at least this is a pretty sick change uh i feel like for the most of them the core sets got better the only one i'm mildly concerned with is um is druid because i don't know how this is really gonna work but i'm sure druid will find a way druid always finds a way but let's see the neutral card shall we so neutral cards what are we losing you sarah the dreamer's gone alex Charles the life finder's gone dr boom is gone karen's gone zilliax is gone the black knight's gone gadgets and auctioneer i wonder if they're gonna unnerf it because it looks so fucking weird at seven mana azurek's gone eater of secrets is gone humongous razor leaf rotten apple bomb goodbye yeti grim necromancer explosive sheep emerald sky talent and tour gun i like this card a lot. I'm surprised they're getting rid of it. I, I think it's one of their best design cards in a hot minute. All right. And what are we getting? We're getting Alex Strauss at the OG one back. I love this card. This card was really good for combo decks, which is kind of concerning in today's year, but I feel like it's not going to be played enough that it's going to be annoying, but definitely a consideration for a lot of decks now, especially slower decks. Yes, Sarah's returning. See you, Matt. Wasn't there. Sylvanas. Oh, I love Sylvanas. She's not probably that good right now but I'm, I'm kind of for it uh we saw nomella she's cool leroy's coming back jessica's coming back molten giant no way dude mountain giant please mountain giant please i'm begging you i miss mountain giants so yes okay so that means handlocks are real back molten giant mountain giants dark fiend card from uh what is it dark alley pact makes handlock an actual real deck oh i'm so excited okay my control tech okay i'm not a fan of it footman uh stonehill defender my be another beloved of mine i think he's really cool uh vicious slither spear i think that's fine from voyage of the sunken city i think it's a good card face form's fine worst on ground we saw the knife elf huntress we saw wand maker might be one of the best two drops ever released um think i'm okay with it south sea deckhand i think is fine i don't think they're gonna it's gonna be a problem <laughs> firefly and the boulder fist ogre boulder fist ogre actually returning to the core set is kind of a big deal because it does summon off the uh the ogre boss what's his name kingpin pud that's kind of that's kind of exciting dude this is a crazy core set optimistic but very worried the, the real reason i'm worried though is just so everyone's clear is that this card coming back means their design philosophy has changed a little bit which is fine i think it's really important for like the game to change and feel different every single year but leroy was rotated for a very specific reason right he was you know, a lot of people did not like him so it's going to be interesting to see how people react and the game is so much more fast paced now that i'm not sure how people are going to respond to this we'll see i thought it'd be important to go through the core set of all the class except for death knight because we want a full picture of what the year of the pegasus might look like i death knight sorry demon hunter is still sticking with some pretty good cards we still have ildari studies the sildra runner still here immolation chaos strike spectral sight warblades are all sticking around i beam Tornado Strike, everything on this page besides the Naga. Kane's still sticking around. Fell Screamer. Metamorphosis is getting buffed. And the Ildari Inquisitor. So Demon Hunter will probably still be pretty great. Really good baseline for the class. Druid is keeping Innervate, Living Roots, Witchwood Apple. Uh, Mark of the Wild, Power of the Wild. They're losing these two. Wrath is sticking around. Fail Rage is around. They're losing these two. Oh my, they're losing these two, which is incredible. Druid of the Claw is still here. And Ancient of the Lore is still around. And Cenarius. Druid, I am okay with because they're getting a three mana swipe, but it's going to be very interesting to see how Druid remains as like a, a ramp class throughout the year uh will they be good we'll have to wait and see hunter is keeping arcane shot jeweled macaw tracking explosive freezing quick shots animal companion deadly shot dragon bane savannah high main which doesn't see play whatsoever and they're losing king crush hunter i think will be okay hunter generally always gets a pretty good base selection of cards they're usually an okay class and from the expansions that are going to be in rotation they'll be okay mage is keeping arcane artificer babbling book flame geyser shooting star losing snap freeze but keeping arcanologist arcan intellect counterspell 
Explosive Runes, Ice Barrier, Luna. Uh, they're losing Fire Sail. They're keeping Fireball. They're keeping Blizzard. They're keeping Firelands Portal. And then they're gaining Flame Strike, which is kind of cool. It's like a, it's a classic mage, man. Uh, Palette is keeping this card, Protector, the other Protector, the Equality, Flash of Light, Outfitter, Hand of a Doll, the Auras, I believe, uh, the Bronze Explorers, Consecration, Hammer of Wrath, Muster for Battle, Warhorse Trainer. They're losing Blessing of Kings. They're keeping the Aura. They're keeping Stand Against Darkness, losing True Silver Champion. And they're keeping Eight Mana Tyrion. That's an 8 8. Priest is keeping Clergy. Flash Heal, Holy Smite, the Conjurer. They're losing the Naru. They're losing this. They're keeping the Geode. They're keeping the Ascendant. Uh, losing Death. Keeping Thrive in the Shadows. Holy Nova. They're losing the Spirits. Losing the Operative. Keeping Rune. Losing Dark. Oh my God, I have three of these. They're keeping Light Bomb. And I believe Katrina is sticking around. Rogue. Okay, Rogue is keeping Shadow Step, which means Leroy is going to be an absolute menace. Kind of worried about that. Backstab is sticking around. Prep sticking around. We're losing Buccaneer. Poison staying. Burglar staying. I believe we're losing Ambush and Cheat Death and Plagiarize. So all this, the secret stuff is gone. Eviscerate staying. Phantom Nice, a two mana staying. Agent, Assassinate, Elva Minstrel, Hench Clan Burglar, and Tess Greyman are all sticking around. The uh, Spectral Cutlass Thief Rogue deck should be very, very fun. Shaman is keeping Zap, Lightning Bolt, Novice Zapper, Overdraft, Ancestral Knowledge, Buff, Flame Tun Totem, Nimbus, Farsight, Feral Spirits, Hex, Lightning Storm, Fire Elemental, Thing from Below, and Alakir. Warlock is keeping Flame Imp, Mortal Coil, Spirit Bomb, Voidwalker, Defile, Drain Soul, Hellfire, Siphon Soul, <laughs> and the Dreadlord, Lord Jaraxxus, and a buff, Twisting Nether, and they're losing Malganus. Warriors keeping Execute, Shield Slam, Slam, Whirlwind, Bash, Blade Storm, Frightened Flunky, Shield Block, Frothing Berserker, Heavy Plate, Brawl, and keeping Grom. And then I'm not going to go through the neutral pool. There's too many. Uh, overall, I feel like this core set is a lot stronger than this Year of the Wolf one. I feel like this one's actually be more impactful. I do hope still that throughout the year they do make changes to the core set just to get some variety, but we'll have to wait and see. I hope you guys are excited. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.